Hi, my name is Carlos Pinheiro, and I'm going to give you the uh, in and outs for selecting a uh, sensor. There's so many sensors for your project today. So selecting the right sensor for your project, the pros and cons are the following. The accelerometer, the digital gyro, the magnetometer, which is the digital compass, using a GPS for direction, and the barometer. I don't think I say that right, but that's fine. A lot of projects today are using a lot of motion. The most common one is on your tablet or your on your iPhone, which detects motion. Well, it detects that motion by using an accelerometer. We're going to talk about this one first, the accelerometer. The way the accelerometer works, it detects gravity, forces. So if you're in a car and you're not moving, you have zero forces on all directions. Now, if you start moving forward, you start feeling pressure back. Well, the sensor, the accelerometer, detects that pressure of gravity. So if it feels that it's moving this way, it knows you're moving forward through G-forces. That's how the accelerometer works. Well, the sensor typically has three axes. Up, down, left, right, and a Z, which is in and out to us. So, by using those three, it figures out what direction you're moving. The only problem is, it doesn't do tilt, because there's really no force, other than if you're doing it pretty quick, it detects the motion but it won't do linear but that's a different sensor so this is how that works you have here's the chip is usually in the center of the device and you got your X which will do a negative and a positive number your Y and your Z up and down that's the accelerometer they're all the same so if you know the Wii controller is a motion sensitive controller that runs with an accelerometer left to right up down front back now for the yaw and the tilt the front actually has uh, infrared and it detects through a sensor on top of the TV that's how it knows that if it's turned or not so that doesn't change but it's got an accelerometer the new one actually has a gyro. I'll tell you what the difference with that is. So now, let's say you're in an airplane. Okay, in an airplane, it'll work pretty good. As long as you're accelerating, the accelerometer will detect forces going back. Then it knows that you're moving this way. Forces down, that means it knows it's going that way. And back and forth but like all things let's say you've reached a speed kind of like when you're in an airplane and it's not speeding up anymore you feel like you're not moving unless you look out the window so this sensor will no longer be good because we'll have a zero reading on any direction unless there's change of force because the accelerometer works with g-forces which is gravity so how do we fix that well there's another sensor the digital gyroscope. The digital gyroscope chip is, looks the same. Of course, it's a different model, but this one actually detects turn and twist. It has three sensors. So you got your X, Y, Z again, which is this, this, and that, but it detects turns. So this would be Y, Z. X. Now, the the gyroscope doesn't detect forces, so if it doesn't detect forces, it really doesn't know what direction I'm going. But it does know that the chip itself is no longer up, down, left, or right because of the gyro. Now the accelerometer will allow you that with the gyro. With the gyro it knows how it's facing. The accelerometer knows that you're moving by force. 
So now, back on the plane. Now, here's another issue. Once you're at a steady speed and the plane is steady, now your gyro is reading zero because you're not changing your pitch and your accelerometer is reading zero because you're not accelerating. So what do we use here? Well now we're going to use a digital compass or the magnetometer. Okay. And the way that one works, that one uses magnetic forces. It senses the magnet on the earth. So it technically really has two axes, which is it detects the strength of the magnet for north for east would be the y and the z is actually the center which is what direction am i facing so it can tell all right is i'm north but is my chip upside down or is my phone upside down or towards me so it can do the calculation this is also called the three axis magnetometer chip looks exactly the same so now, when you're back on the airplane, you can know what direction you're heading. There's another way and another method of doing that, which is with a GPS sensor. We'll go to that one next, but the magnetometer works using the Earth's magnetic poles. Now, technically, we have north, which is what we use, and we have true north. Well, the, the magnetometer only detects the magnetic field, and maps don't really use this that much. It uses inclination, declination, depending on where on Earth you are, which usually works like this. Here's the pole, but here's the magnetic field. So depending on what part of Earth you are, you have to do a declaration. Now how that operates is uh, usually through data service and through GPS you can tell where you are and it'll know the calculation. Now if you use the gyro, the, the magnetosphere, the compass, will help kind of calibrate it, align so it knows where it's standing. So then it's set to zero once you're straight forward standing now the next sensor is the GPS the GPS is the most common sensor but it also is the sensor uses the most power it works by of course satellites here's my little makeshift little picture works with satellites triangulating exactly where you're standing three satellites, the fourth for time. If you have a fifth, it can actually even tell you altitude. Now I'll explain more how that one works. The problem with the GPS using it as a compass is that unless you're moving, it really doesn't know if you're north, south, east, west, northeast. It doesn't know because it does its comparison by where on earth are you where were you and it can tell that direction here's an example of course this is a map of the longitude latitude if I'm here and then a minute later I'm here a minute later I'm here the GPS will do a calculation well the device will do a calculation by the pinpoints of GPS and it will know I'm heading north at what speed what's my heading where on earth I am at the time and it just keeps doing that calculation but if I'm not moving it really doesn't even know what direction I'm at so you can use a GPS to know heading but if you are still it could go kind of crazy if you don't have the help of of the accelerometer or the gyro now the barometer is not a sensor that's used very much but the advantage is the higher you are from the earth the pressure changes 
so also does the temperature these usually have a temperature sensor also built in just so you can detect your altitude now you can use the GPS to do the same thing if you have enough satellites it can calculate it but the barometer actually does pressure air pressure by detecting the air pressure and the temperature of the air of course you couldn't try it inside one of these airplanes because it's sealed but like a Cessna which isn't sealed you can actually tell how high you are without using a GPS with a GPS you can triangulate let's do a map with a GPS sensor you can triangulate satellite one two three will tell where you are four will perfect the time so it's more exact more precise and another they'll be able to tell through a vector how high from the earth you are so that's another way using a GPS sensor so pretty much every sensor works for one thing or another it's just what are the benefits what are the cons and what are the pros now here's a a diagram which helps detect or help you out which is which all right of course the pressure helps with the the barometer with the up okay the gyro helps with the spin on the three how you're facing the accelerometer helps with the force of what direction is the force moving and of course the magnetometer will tell you where it senses the the uh, magnetic force if north east and how the sensor is facing so the most common common used is the accelerometer because with that you can pretty much tell what direction you're going the gyroscope is a lot more sensitive so a lot of devices now have both this one's the least used especially on like your iPad the iPad has no use for barometer at all barely any smartphone has it it doesn't need it usually it does have the GPS for tracking many have the compass the gyro for sure and the accelerometer which was the first one it ever really had so you can tell this 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 direction spin and the problem with also the magnetometer is if you have magnets or too many metals around it it could affect the reading so here I'm going to demonstrate how on this smartphone we have all the sensors running at the same time this tells me the orientation the heading but it also does a calculation where it knows that I'm going to be always looking at the screen never like this so it does the assumption that either if I'm reading the compass with the phone straight or down the compass recalibrates itself here's my pitch my roll that's the gyro this is the magnetic field or the magnometer detects magnetic let's put it next to a metal see how it changes and the degree this is the accelerometer which really only detects when there's movement or really hard see the number these are the altitude that's actually just a calculation uh, done latitude longitude that's the GPS sensor Lux is a whole other sensor that's just light detecting light this is the battery that's a whole other sensor and these are corrections but I can turn the dot tells me how I'm facing the big one the direction these are actually all the sensors running at exactly the same time so all it comes down to is the calculation of how are you going to be looking at it most all these phones and devices put the chip right smack in the center of the phone
especially on the iPad, you have it right here on your iPhone. Put, they put all these sensors here, except for the GPS. The GPS is try to put it on top for the best reception. So, back to our sensors. Accelerometer senses is always pointing to gravity down. That's how it detects the force. Gyro detects tilt and movement. Magnetometer detects magnet the Earth's magnetic field. GPS works by a constellation of satellites. And the barometer works by the air pressure and where you are on Earth. Most common use is the accelerometer. And the gyro is the second most used. I hope this helps you out. Any question you have, go to the bottom. I will put on the description some links that will explain how the accelerometer is made. And I found a video that you might like. It's only like 40 seconds long of a guy who tests three at real time with his Arduino on screen. And you can see how one's more sensitive, one's more jittery, but how they have advantages. So of course for a controller, you'll like this one and this one. Um, for navigation on air, you'd want this one, this one, and this one. But of course GPS is always good. Uh, for a car, you'd want this one, this one, and that one. Um, for all in general purposes, you like this one, this one. If you're doing a drone, a uh, quadcopter or helicopter, you'd like this one. You don't want to put too many sensors because it gets very heavy. But the gyro is good enough because you really don't need to sense force. But you need to know where it is and what direction. And the GPS is too slow to counter these. These are very, very fast. So I hope it helps. And uh, select your sensor wisely. Thanks.